Vivid Whisper presents Whisperling, Episode 2, Forensics. Quinn? Quinn awoke on the windowsill of her room. Ah! What are you doing? I'm awake. Nothing. Why are you on the floor? No reason. Um... Did you see that tree fall down across the street? Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? I didn't think the storm was that bad. I guess. Okay. Anyway, time to get ready for school. Yes. Right. On it. Good. Smooth. Shut up. Quinn and Spark looked out the window at the town of Ardor. The huts on the roof across the street were torn to shreds, and the gnomes had gotten to work rebuilding. A small crowd of dryads were sitting solemnly around the fallen tree, and a few gnomes joined them. Quinn spotted the puppet creature, its torso tied to a splint it could barely walk without flopping over. It seemed to be trying to go somewhere, but Bluebulb kept blocking its path. That really happened, didn't it? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Quinn shuddered. She got dressed without much thought, a dress and brimmed hat pairing that looked like something from an old western saloon. She prepared and left for school in a daze, making eye contact with several gnomes but not stopping to talk to them. Andrea would have seen her. Hey. Quinn, you okay? Dominic had closed his locker and was looking at her oddly. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Just tired. Why? You look shell-shocked. Oh, no, I'm fine. You? Fine. Did you hear the thunder last night? Insane. It uprooted the tree across the street from me. Hey, punks. Jen casually leaned against the locker beside Quinn's, squinting at the passers-by. How are you? Weird. People have been staring at me. Like, more than usual. Really? Why? I don't know. Quinn looked around. There were definitely eyes on Jen, glancing away as soon as she noticed them. Do you think it has something to do with... What? Steven? What would... Oh. Uh, oh, he is so dead. Wait, what? Jen was already walking away. I'm gonna kill him. Jen, wait, what happened? He's telling people I started the fire. Why would he do that? Have you met him? Where are you going? Jen, wait. Quinn and Dominic hurried after Jen. Quinn wanted to say something, show Jen how ridiculous this was, but she couldn't think of the words. Jen pounded up to Steven's locker. What the hell, man? What? You know what? You're spreading lies about me. Again, stop it. What are you talking about? I didn't start any goddamn fire. Okay. Sure. People were watching them. Quinn cringed. This was only going to make Jen look worse. Is that all? Don't play dumb. I'm not. So it's not an act, then? You're telling people I set the fire. Um, sure. I I told a couple people you might have. Well, I didn't, so shut the hell up about it. Not like I'm the only one telling people. But nah, I get it. There was an insufferable glint in Stephen's eye. Jen opened her mouth to protest, but she finally noticed how many people were watching them, staring at her. She held her head up and walked away. Whatever. You got it, bro. No big deal. You definitely didn't start any fires. I got you. (sighs) Jen, I don't think he's gonna stop. I know, Dominic. That was a complete failure. Sorry. I tried to warn you. Did you? Did you really? Quinn bit her tongue. If that's what trying to warn her looked like, it was pretty pathetic. Sorry, Quinn. I didn't mean that. I totally screwed that up. It's okay. I gotta go. Yeah. Uh, Your place after school today, right, Dominic? Oh, yeah. Quinn? Yes. Perfect. See you. Bye, Dominic. Don't give me that look. I wasn't going to kill him. That's literally exactly what you said you were going to do. (laughs) Oh, did I? Whoops. The two sat together in math, Spark taking his familiar seat on the windowsill by Quinn. She tried to focus during her classes, but her mind kept drifting. A bird? Was it a bird? It had wings and claws and a head like an owl, but nothing else seemed very bird-like about it. She had seen some gnomes jump off the roof to get away from it. Glowing porthole eyes, all the lashing bridge cables. 
In history, once again, the class was dedicated to research, so Quinn found a table in the corner by herself, laid out her hat and open backpack to claim it, and tried to work on her draft. Do you want to talk about it? Talk about what? Talk about what? Did you just forget the huge metal monster that smashed up Ardor? Not right now. I'm working. It's just... You've been staring without typing anything for like ten minutes. I have not. It hasn't been that long. Okay. Fine, I'll type. I'm not telling you to write. Then what are you telling me to do? Sorry. You could get me a book to read. Quinn rolled her eyes and smiled, turning to the bookshelf behind her. There aren't any cartoons here. Would you accept, um, French architecture, 1850 to 1900? Does it have pictures? Maybe of buildings? Hmm. Hold on. Maybe I can find something. Spark hopped down to go looking for a book. Quinn turned to the computer and pictured the flaming porthole that she had spotted through her window. She remembered how each segment, all the way down the pipe, seemed to turn independently, like a mechanized esophagus to a stomach of burning rage. Hey, Quinn! Quinn started, lifting her head from her hands where it rested. Mike was standing between the bookshelf and her table, far away from the rest of the class. Hi, Mike. How's it going? Oh, fine. Having trouble focusing. Yeah, me too. Quinn's gaze shifted around. Spark was peeking out from her bag. How's your draft going? It's going... well. Are you looking for a book? Yeah, or uh, I'm looking for books on Rockefeller. Okay. Yeah. What about Rockefeller? Anything, really. But something about his charity would be great. You're writing about Rockefeller's charity? Uh, well, I I'm weighing the pros and cons, you know... Robber Baron, Captain of Industry, kind of that stuff. Sure. The only question anyone ever asks about him. So which side are you taking? I don't really know, but I'm arguing it was a good thing since, you know, we have to pick a side. Because it's a thesis paper. It's stupid, isn't it? We have to pick a side? Why is it only worth writing if we've made up our minds? What if it's more complicated than that? Exactly. You get it. Like, he did good stuff, he did bad stuff. What does it matter if we call him a good person or a bad person? He still, you know, did the stuff. Yeah. All right, well, this section is mostly reference books, I think. You probably want biographies. Over there. Oh! Right. Duh! <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you. See ya. Actually, do you mind if I sit here? It's quieter here. Um, yeah, sure. As Mike walked away, Spark climbed out of Quinn's open backpack and curled up in the seat next to her. Sorry, can't get you a book right now. Oh, how I suffer. All the books around here are boring anyway. Told you. Who even uses these books? Next time, can we sit in the graphic novel section? Maybe. Spark faded from view as Mike returned and sat to join Quinn. They sat quietly for a while. Mike taking notes, Quinn writing, and rewriting the same sentence over and over again. Crazy about the fire, right? Yeah. Who do you think started it? It wasn't Jen. Okay. I believe you. I heard it might have been her, but it doesn't seem right. She didn't. Stephen was lying. It wasn't Stephen who told me. Oh. Well, he's been telling people. Mike shrugged and turned back to his notes. They sat for the rest of class. Quinn kept thinking about saying something, but couldn't decide what. So they sat quietly until class ended. As they left the library, Quinn waved to Mike and walked to meet Dominic and Jen for lunch at the corner table they always took. Jen sat there alone, and Quinn could tell the air was different around her. Eyes kept landing on them and then glancing away. Nevertheless, Jen smiled when Quinn sat down. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Well, there's this one guy over at that table there eating by himself and I kept catching him staring at me. So I made a game of staring back at him and it made him so uncomfortable he switched to the other side of the table so he's looking away from me. So that was fun. Quinn looked at the guy she was talking about. All she could make out was a head of unkempt black hair. She nodded and yawned. 
What about you? You look exhausted. I'm fine. The bags under your eyes don't help. Huynh rubbed her face and Jen chuckled. <laughs> I'm teasing. Just don't stay up so late working on your paper. You're too far ahead for that. You're one to talk. But I don't drive myself crazy working till 2 a.m. I didn't. Dominic sat down next to them. He looked around, disturbed by all the looks they were getting. Jesus, Jen, it's like your hair's on fire. Like my hair's on fire and I'm the one who started it. Has anyone confronted you about it? A couple people asked me if I started the fire, yeah. I don't think anyone really cares. They just think I'm crazy, but most of them thought that already, so... How about you? I'm a sideshow. Quinn's a zombie. What's going on with you? Not much. Oh, how'd you find the bio test? Okay. I think I totally screwed it up. Sure. No, I mean it. Screwed it up in the Jenna Corvin, child prodigy who's skipping two grades next year way, or in the normal person way. Hey, I... We're not sure that's happening yet. Don't jinx it. Sorry. I'm sure you did fine. You always do fine. Quinn could see Jen's face darken as Stephen and Mike walked by their table. No one said anything. Quinn pretended not to notice them. Hours later, when school was finally over and the three met up to head to Dominic's house, Jen's face had changed. The darkness had been replaced with a familiar look of scheming. I have a plan. Okay, what kind of plan? The principal told me today that the police couldn't do much to find who made the fire, especially since it's only happened once. The principal? Never mind, so it got me thinking we should do it ourselves. You're not proposing. Yes! That we set another fire, are you? What? No, come on. I'm saying we should figure out who set it. Oh. Uh, what? Let's do it! What? How? Yes! Thank you! What's the plan? Guys! Oh, that's it. <laughs> What? That's all I got so far. What? What? I only just thought of it. We'll figure out more. We're smart. Give it time. I don't know if that's the best idea. I mean, I'm just afraid it will make us all look suspicious. Especially you. I know. That's why I need you. We are the perfect team. Quinn, you're great. Since in addition to being crazy, no offense, it's a compliment, you are the best at talking to people. This was easily the most baffling way anyone had ever described Quinn. She hated talking to people. Also, she wasn't sure what Jen meant by crazy. Thank you. And Dominic, you'll tell us why everything we come up with is a terrible idea, and then we can think of ways to make it better. Um... Come on, haven't you ever wanted to be a detective? I mean... Yes. Maybe? That's all we're doing. I don't know. Come on, we'll just talk about it. If we can't come up with something, I'll drop it. Quinn doubted this very strongly. Come on. Okay, fine. We'll try it. Awesome! We'll talk more in... private. The three rode to Dominic's house together. As they arrived, Spark hopped out of Quinn's bag. I'm off to adventure and excitement. He usually stayed outside when the kids hung out. It's more interesting out there. Still, this evening... Don't worry. You've got my doll. If anything happens, I'll jump right back. Spark could only go so far from the doll before disappearing anyway. They weren't sure exactly how far, but it wasn't more than a few blocks. Quinn nodded subtly. Maybe I can figure out something about, you know. He walked away, seriously at first, but quickly got distracted and chased after a nearby flock of sparrows. Dominic opened the door. Hello? Guess not. In Dominic's room, Quinn and Jen sat in their de facto seats of power. Quinn on the windowsill, spending even more time staring out the window today than usual. Jen on the bed, as if she owned it. Dominic was still downstairs. Okay, so, what do we know? Jen tossed a small ball up and down, catching it almost every time. It's almost definitely a guy. Almost definitely. A girl could have snuck in to make themselves look less suspicious. There are certainly some girls who would do that. Girls are devious, but not as devious as guys are stupid. But you're right, we should keep an open mind. Dominic opened the door awkwardly, his hands filled with drinking glasses. Jen jumped up to help him give them out. Oh, here! Mysteriously sweet seltzer drink? Thanks. Jen handed Quinn the seltzer and sat down, sipping her glass of soda. What were you talking about? We agreed it's probably a guy. Not guaranteed, but probably. Not ruling anything out. So we've basically cracked the case already. Have you considered a girl wearing a fake mustache? Ooh. What else do we know? They had to set the fire somehow. Yes. How did they set the fire anyway? 
And where? Was it in a trash can? A toilet? How do you set a toilet on fire? Let's find out. How do you set... Um, Well, if you weren't on a watch list before... Oh, I'm sure I was. May as well give them something to watch. Huh. Interesting. What? Sometimes toilets catch fire if the water in the plumbing is so polluted it becomes flammable. So they must have... Oh my god. They must have infiltrated the town's water supply. It's a conspiracy! It goes all the way to the top! Okay, what are some other ways? I always wanted to say that something went all the way to the top. Oh, if someone drank enough gasoline, they would... No, Jen. Yeah, that didn't look like a particularly trustworthy website. Next. We don't even know that's where they set the fire. Wouldn't the garbage can be much easier anyway? Probably. But again, people are stupid. And there's more privacy in a stall. Are we sure it wasn't an accident? We're sure. Wait, why? Because if it was an accident, the prime suspect would be someone who is A, an idiot, and B, a smoker. I'm neither. If it was arson, the prime suspect would be someone who is A, clever, and B, special. Different. I'm both. Therefore, must be arson. I don't know if that's really proof that- Okay, but how do we figure out who did it? Spy cameras. You want to put spy cameras in the bathroom? You're right. The school's probably already done it. Excuse me? That's illegal, Jen. Oh, come on. Privacy is dead anyway. If it's any comfort, if the fire was in the trash can, the cameras probably aren't in the stalls. It's not. We don't even know if he- If it's a he, we'll do it again, and if it doesn't happen again- Then the only place we can get clues is the scene of the crime. I like the way you think. They've probably already cleaned out the bathroom. It was closed today, wasn't it? Yeah, whole thing. Then they might not have cleaned it completely. I don't like where this is going. So we break into the scene of the crime and look for clues. Stop. I like it. No, stop. That's a terrible idea. First of all, You think there'd be any clues left after two days? Also, what if someone sees us? We could just tell them the truth. We're not technically breaking any rules. Aside from, you know, breaking into the bathroom. Oh, I wouldn't count on it. But as long as I'm not the one who breaks in. They'd still know we're your friends. You could have asked us to clean up some evidence you dropped. Yeah, okay, buzzkill. I thought that was my special skill. Yeah, doesn't mean it's not true. I think I can do it. How? Quinn shrugged and sipped her drink. I'll think of something. The group laughed, and the conversation moved on to other topics. Eventually, the sun began to set, and Quinn found herself looking out the window even more. She thought of giant metal talons. Eventually, Jen stood up and threw on her jacket. I've gotta head home. Okay. Dominic stood to see her out. Quinn, still looking out the window, didn't. See you tomorrow. See you. You coming, Quinn? Even a single one of the monster's bridge cables could probably crush her rib cage if it got close enough, let alone its claws. Um, I don't need to head out yet. All right, suit yourself. Dominic went downstairs to see Jan out. Quinn stayed put. Spark crawled out of her bag. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Fine. When did you get back? Just a few minutes ago. Okay. Jan's heading home? Yeah. By the way, I volunteered you for something. Um, what sort of thing? How's your sleuthing? Oh, I get to be a spy? I'll tell you more about it later. I've trained my whole life for this. Want to stay for dinner? Sure, thank you. All right, Dad won't be home till later, so I was just going to heat up a frozen pizza. Oh, okay. That work for you? Sure. All right, let's go. Let's cook something. What? It'll be fun. Do you know how to cook? Not even a little bit. Let's do it. Uh, You know, sure. Let's do it. Come on, let's see what you got. Once they reached the kitchen, Quinn got to work searching. This is going to be a disaster, isn't it? Probably. There wasn't a lot to find. The bread box held one half of a loaf of sliced bread and some tortillas. The fridge held a selection of condiments, cold cuts, lettuce, and sliced cheeses, but not much else. I just don't know if there's anything... The pantry wasn't much better. Finally, Quinn tried the freezer, which turned out to be better stocked than the rest of the kitchen combined. 
yeah, we don't cook a lot anymore. That was my mom's thing. Gwyn winced slightly, but Dominic didn't seem upset, so she carried on. Hmm, a puzzle. Any ideas? Quesadillas? Perfect. I'll make us a salad. I mean, I'd probably end up burning your house down if I tried cooking anything. And then we'd be the ones everyone thought were arsonists. Sounds good. Quinn was relieved Dominic was enjoying this. Even after four years, she tried not to remind him of his mother. She pulled the lettuce and carrots from the fridge. It would be enough for two people. Two people who didn't want to eat large salads. Dominic started grating cheese while Quinn wondered what she could use to make a dressing. Do you have any olive oil? I don't think so. What about this? That's cooking spray. That's basically olive oil, right? It says olive oil flavor on the bottle. Maybe. Let's find out. Quinn retrieved the vinegar from the pantry and the mustard from the fridge. Andrea once made a salad dressing with mustard. She threw in some crushed peanuts for good measure. The two sat down in front of the television to eat. The salad wasn't good, per se, but that wasn't the point. So, olive oil flavor. Not quite like olive oil. Not quite. I'm a trendsetter. That's one way to describe it. So, we're detectives now, huh? Sure are. Sneaking around, investigating, breaking into crime scenes. Yeah, that's what detectives do, right? The cool ones do. Okay, I know what you're going to say. It's just reckless, isn't it? It's not like anyone actually thinks it was Jen. Any adults, I mean. Why are we breaking into a bathroom to assemble clues? Why can't we just let the adults do it? Because you can't trust adults to figure anything out. They don't know the school like we do. The principal? The teachers? They only know the business side. They don't know what happens in the school for real. They watch the hallways from their office. We live in them. When did this become a noir film? Oh, this would be a great excuse to wear my detective outfit, wouldn't it? You have reasons for choosing your outfits? Perfectly legitimate ones, thank you. This one, for instance, is a statement about colonialism. What does an old western costume have to do with colonialism? Up to interpretation. I can't believe Jen said I was the good at talking one. What, you'd rather be the stick in the mud? No, though, you've got to admit. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just can't believe she said I was the... Good at talking one. The one who does use words good? I have the best words. You've seen me talk to people. I suck at it. I get all nervous and quiet. Do you? Well, not with you or Jen, duh. But what if we get caught doing something and Jen expects me to talk us out of it? Or what if I have to talk to Steven? <sighs> oh, come on. No one can talk to them. Jen can. She stands up to them. She is special. Well, I wish I could do that. Dominic, why are we watching the news? Yeah, I wasn't sure what was on. It was commercials when we got to the channel. Let's play a game instead. Sure. Dominic didn't like the violent games Jen did, so at his house they mostly played racing games. Quinn didn't mind, of course. She liked going fast, and it was much nicer to think about racing than giant steel owl monsters who probably ate a whole bunch of gnomes last night. There it is. Not fair. They played several rounds, Quinn glancing out the window more and more as the sky grew dark. Your dad's still not home. Nah, he has to work late most nights. Do you think he'd mind if I stayed over tonight? It's getting late. Oh, sure. I'll ask. At the end of that round, Dominic texted his father. Yep, he's alright with it. Just as long as you call your mom. Of course. Tell him thank you. Quinn called Andrea, mostly as a formality. Later, as Quinn stood in the bathroom, brushing her teeth in the pajamas Dominic had let her borrow, Spark jumped onto the sink rim to join her. I know what you're doing. I'm scared too. But you know this isn't going to work forever. It's not like you can live here. Quinn clenched her eyes. The creature's head was taller than she was. And that noise. Just for tonight. Tomorrow's Saturday, we'll go check in with Blue Bulb. Okay. She petted him, and he brushed against her before fading away. That night, Quinn lay on Dominic's couch, waiting to hear the sound again. 
Do you think we'd hear it from here? I don't know. Are you just going to lie awake all night? Are you? Touche. Eventually they fell asleep, not once hearing the monster's call. In the morning, they had breakfast with Dominic and his father before riding back home. Gwyn cringed when she saw Arter, the hut still wrecked, though seemingly not worse than the previous morning. She caught Blue Bulb's eye and headed over to meet him. Ah, there you are, Miss Quinn. Mayor, what... What was that thing two nights ago? Uh, I don't rightly know, I don't. All I know is that puppet fella must have seen it coming and tried to warn us. Shame we couldn't have listened. Is it... Is it coming back? It might be. Hate to say. I asked the puppet fella and he nodded. At least I think he did. Where'd he go? Away? Don't rightly know. Thing could barely walk. The beast split it nearly in half. I saw. We splinted it up with some bits of wood so it could walk without splitting, but it didn't rest. Went marching off like it had somewhere to be real important like. Maybe it's following the creature? Hope so. Would mean it isn't coming back. I wish it the best of luck if it's true. Can't imagine what that'd do to a fella. Following a monster like that, biting it over and over. Hi, Mom. Hi, honey. How's it going? Did you have a good night? Yeah, it was fun. Great. Oh, here's the permission slip I keep forgetting to give back. Oh, and by the way, honey, after you take a shower and change, remember to write back to Dad. Oh, right. Quinn took the permission slip and ran upstairs, jumped in the shower, and changed, then sat down at her computer. Hey, you can come out. Spark walked out of the fox plush. I don't really know what to write. To Dad. Just tell him what's been happening with you? What has been happening with me? I can't exactly tell him that a giant steel thing is all I've been thinking about for two days. The fire? Yes, that too. Do I tell him that Jen is being accused and that we're trying to catch the real arsonist? Leave that detail out? I don't want to lie. Then just tell him. He'd understand. Maybe. But what if he tells Mom? Then don't. I don't want to lie. I mean, it's so dumb. At least I have a reason this time. Last time I felt like this, I couldn't do anything at all, and I didn't even have an excuse. You were sick. I mean, yeah, but, you know, not like sick sick. I just couldn't get out of bed. I just... Are things better now than they were? Are they worse? We've been over this. Being depressed counts as being sick. But I don't know. I don't know what you should tell him. Quinn took another minute to think about it, but then started typing. That night, Quinn slept in her own bed, and once again there was no attack. The town thought that, just maybe, the danger had passed.